Many of us have dreamed of winning athletic glory. The North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame honors some special men and women who have made their dreams of glory come true. Most of these athletes are Tar Heel bred. They started off in places like Waynesville and Landis and Windsor. Through hard work and natural ability, they ended up in the World Series, the Super Bowl, the Olympics, the Final Four, or the Masters. The North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame exhibit, located at the North Carolina Museum of History in downtown Raleigh, honors the accomplishments of those athletes. Established in 1963, the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame celebrates extraordinary athletic achievement and leadership and commemorates exceptional athletic triumphs for the inspiration and pleasure of all North Carolinians. Over the years, the hall has inducted more than 350 sports legends, including athletes, administrators, and media personalities. Many of them have donated mementos of their sports careers to the hall. Come with us now as we explore this incredible exhibit and showcase just a few of the many incredible achievements and artifacts held within. This is a press badge worn by Mary Garber. Garber was a pioneer female sports writer for the Winston-Salem Journal and Sentinel. She received numerous honors and awards in a career that began in the 1940s and lasted for more than a half century, including induction into the North Carolina Journalism Hall of Fame. Once barred from press boxes because of her gender, she became president of the Atlantic Coast Sports Writers Association in the late 1970s. This trophy was awarded to Paige Marsh for winning the North and South Women's Amateur Championship in Pinehurst in 1989. Marsh was a top amateur golfer in the 1980s and 1990s. She won the North Carolina Women's State Amateur Championship six times between 1983 and 1999 and captured the prestigious North and South Women's Amateur Championship in 1989. The Jamestown native became head coach of the North Carolina State University women's golf team in 1999. This golf glove and golf bag were used by Arnold Palmer at Muirfield, Scotland in 1973 Ryder Cup matches. These matches were Palmer's last appearances as a Ryder Cup player. In the 1950s, Palmer was a top collegiate golfer at Wake Forest University. The Associated Press named him Athlete of the Decade for the 1960s. As a professional, he won over 90 tournaments, including four Masters crowns, two British Open titles, and a U.S. Open. The charismatic Palmer helped to spark an expansion of golf's popularity. Alvin General Crowder was a major league pitcher from 1923 to 1935. He pitched in the first All-Star game in 1933. The Winston-Salem native pitched a five-hitter in the 1935 World Series and won the fourth game for the Detroit Tigers. When he retired, he had a career record of 167 wins against 115 losses. This baseball glove was worn by Crowder during the first Major League Baseball All-Star Game in 1933. A native of Goldsboro, Clyde King was a relief pitcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers when the team won the National League crowns in 1947 and 1952. Later, he worked as a pitching coach for several professional teams and as manager for the San Francisco Giants, the Atlanta Braves, and the New York Yankees. This uniform was worn by King when he managed the New York Yankees in 1982. Lindsey Hat Perry used this whistle during his career as a football coach and official. A multi-sport star at Elon College in the 1920s, Perry coached Reedsville High School to eight state football championships. In 1948, he became the first executive director of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. A longtime football official, Perry worked in several bowl games. This ring was presented to Billy Cox on induction into the Duke University Sports Hall of Fame in 1978. Billy Cox was an All-American at Duke and captain of the 1950 football team. He played offensive and defensive positions with the Washington Redskins for three years. These track shoes were worn by Kathy McMillan in the 1976 Montreal Olympics. McMillan, a Rayford native, was a top track and field athlete of the 1970s and 1980s. She won a silver medal in the long jump at the 1976 Montreal Olympics and a gold medal in the long jump in the 1979 Pan American Games in San Juan, Puerto Rico. 
McMillan also captured numerous jump and sprint titles at Hope County High School and Tennessee State University. In 1994, Dale Earnhardt, one of the most successful racers in NASCAR history, captured his seventh Winston Cup title, equaling the record set by Richard Petty. Through the 1994 season, the Kannapolis native had won more than $20 million on the NASCAR circuit, more than any other driver in history. This racing suit was worn by Earnhardt in the 1994 NASCAR season. These coveralls were worn by Richard Petty during the 1971 racing season. Petty was the son of NASCAR racing champion Lee Petty. He carried on the family's winning tradition and became a Southern folk hero. Voted Rookie of the Year in 1959, Petty was the first to reach the $1 million mark in career earnings. He had 200 NASCAR victories when he retired following the 1992 season. This helmet and goggles belonged to his father, Lee Arnold Petty, and were worn when he competed on dirt and paved racetracks in the early 1950s. A native of Randaman, Lee Petty was one of the pioneers of stock car racing. He dominated the sport in the late 1950s and won national championships on the NASCAR racing circuit in 1954, 1958, and 1959. The incredible story of Marty Sheets began in 1953. Over the years, Sheets became a highly decorated Special Olympics athlete, winning 250 medals, including seven in World Games, competing in golf, powerlifting, swimming, tennis skills, and skiing. But those accomplishments and achievements are only part of his remarkable story. As a member of the Special Olympics North America Golf Committee, Sheets traveled all over the country attending events, recruiting volunteers, and representing the Special Olympics cause. He was selected by the Olympics Committee as one of its community heroes to serve as an official torchbearer when the Olympic torch passed through Greensboro prior to the 1996 Olympic Games held in Atlanta. His example and service to the community have been an inspiration to many. These trading cards were issued for Ernie Barnes, a guard with the Denver Broncos in 1964. A Durham native, Barnes attended Hillside High School and became captain of the football team. With a full athletic scholarship to North Carolina College, now North Carolina Central University, he continued playing football while majoring in art then played five seasons of professional football. After retiring in 1965, Barnes was commissioned by numerous sports organizations and was twice named Sport Artist of the Year. The Governor's Award was presented to Eddie Bridges. A Morganton native, Bridges played football and ran track at Elon College. However, his work in hunting, fishing, and conservation have made the most impact. The Greensboro businessman has worked to develop the state's Wildlife Endowment Fund, Waterfowl Conservation Stamp and Print Program, and Income Tax Checkoff Program, and to lead the protection of game and fish resources, as well as the acquisition of lands for outdoor recreational pursuits. This stopwatch belonged to Lennox Baker, and it was used to officiate games in the Southern Conference from 1933 to 1940. Dr. Lennox Baker was a pioneer in sports medicine. As a orthopedic surgeon, he saved the careers of many athletes who suffered serious bone and joint injuries. The Duke University graduate mended many athletes and other sports heroes, such as Babe Ruth and Joe DiMaggio. This basketball, which was used by the U.S. women's basketball team in practice for the 1988 Seoul Summer Olympics, was signed and presented to Kay Yao by all the members of the team and staff. A Greensboro native, Yao became head women's basketball coach at North Carolina State University in 1975. She was head coach of gold medal teams in women's basketball in the 1986 Goodwill Games and the 1988 Seoul Summer Olympics. Through the 1993 season, she had coached more than 450 college victories. Meadowlark Lemon wore this Harlem Globetrotters uniform in the late 1970s. The Wilmington native was the star attraction of the Harlem Globetrotters, dribbling and clowning to the tune of Sweet Georgia Brown. He and his teammates have been ambassadors of goodwill and laughter throughout the world. This trophy was awarded to the Wake Forest University basketball team as 1953 Southern Conference champions. Raleigh native Murray Greeson was head basketball coach at Wake Forest from 1933 to 1957. His Wake Forest teams 
won 285 games and the SC title in 1953. Greeson was named Coach of the Year for the Southern Conference in 1953 and for the Atlantic Coast Conference in 1956. This jersey was worn by Phil Ford during his career from 1974 to 1978 at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Ford came out of Rocky Mount to become a three-time All-American at Carolina and the 1978 ACC Player of the Year. He also starred on the 1976 U.S. Men's Olympic team and played seven seasons in the NBA. He was also the 1979 NBA Rookie of the Year. To learn more about the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame, visit ncshof.org. And to learn more about the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame exhibit, located at the North Carolina Museum of History in downtown Raleigh, visit ncmuseumofhistory.org.